in this video, we're going to cover how to define new objects inside VMware RE Operations Management Pack Builder. Before you do this, you'll have to make sure that you've defined any requests that you want to use the information of on your objects. But if you've done this, then you're ready to go ahead and start defining your new object types. So the first object type I'm going to define today is a cluster object, and I'm just going to call this rubric cluster. Now this object type field is going to directly translate to the object type in VMware RE operations. So it's helpful to make sure that this is a name that's going to be able to be understood amongst all the other object types you may already have there. So something as simple as cluster or VM really might not be enough. Um, it's really a choice that you'll have to make when you come to it. And then you can also choose, and you'll need to choose an object uh, icon that you're going to associate with it. This will show up in traversal specs and in other places in VMware RE operations. The next step is to select those attributes that you want to associate as metrics and properties on the object type. So I'm going to take ID version and name real quick. And the next step is to review these attributes and adjust any labels that might need it, either because they're um, not unique or if they're not very helpful enough. And we'll probably see an example of that in the next object. Uh, you can also adjust the data type and set them to either a number or decimal. And then if they are a number, you can set them to be a metric. And um, yeah. So the next step after you've got those all reviewed is to specify uh, what the identifiers and way that this is going to be named inside of VMware RE operations. So this first one is just the name. This is going to be a one of your properties that represents uh, how you'd want to see this in a human readable way. So in this case, the name field is going to be a great one for this. The next is the object identifiers. Now, once this information is being sent into VMware RE operations, we're going to need to make sure that it is globally unique amongst the other um, uh, objects of this type. So we wouldn't want to use name in this case because the name can be um, duplicated across multiple um, environments. There's nothing making sure that those are unique. And instead, we're going to use ID. And if ID wasn't enough, we could use a combination of uh, properties to make this unique. But in this case, uh, the ID, the UID um, from rubric is enough to identify this cluster against a different rubric cluster. So we're going to save this. And this is our uh, rubric cluster object that's now defined. It has three properties, and it's internal. Internal means that we're defining a new object type. In another video, we'll cover how to create uh, and extend existing objects with a management pack. But uh, for now, we're just covering how to create new object types. The other type of object we're going to create is a uh, rubric VM. And again, we're going to choose a label and an icon. And now in this case, what we're going to do is choose a number of properties that we want to uh, have for this object. And we're going to include information from multiple requests. In this case, I want to include the count of snapshots that this VM has in rubric. OK, so again, we're reviewing the properties and metrics, and we're trying to make sure that all the values are unique for the labels and that they make sense for what we're trying to, um, that we're going to understand what they are when we're in VMware RE operations. If we look at this label as just total, it's not really clear what it's total of. and if we want to know what it, it relates to, is we can expand out these rows for any of these um, uh, properties or metrics and see where this attribute came from, where this metric's coming from. This particular metric is coming from the snapshot request, and it's in the base list, and the attribute is called total. So this really isn't total. It's a very good name for it. It's more of a, a snapshot count. So we can change this label here so it makes a little bit more sense. And we can set the count unit on it as well. Once we've reviewed the rest of these, we can go on down. And again, we want to choose uh, an appropriate property that would represent the name of this object. In this case, the name field will be a good one again. And then we want to choose the uh, object 
properties that would work really well for uh, unique identifiers. In this case, the ID again will be a, a good one because it's a UUID. All right, and then now we have one more step that we didn't have previously, and this has to do with attribute bindings. So when you take uh, attributes from multiple requests or sometimes from different lists in, in a request, you need to tell the management pack builder how these are going to link to each other. This way, when the manager pack is performing a collection and it gets these different responses, it knows which properties or which attributes go with which objects. So the first step is to pick a, a list that has all of your uh, identifying properties in it, or at least um, most of them. So we have two requests here. We have the VM where VM1 that we know has uh, like our ID, and our cluster ID and a bunch of other stuff like that. And then we have the snapshot information that we got the um, snapshot count from. So in this case, we're just going to choose the VM request as our base list since it has most of the identifying information about our VM. Now that we've chosen that, for each of the other lists that we uh, may have pulled attributes from, we're going to create a mapping from that list to the, the object. And basically, the object properties are going to be pulled from this base list. So uh, the only one that we have is the snapshot base. And this is where we pulled count from. And if we look at this, we have access to the VM ID. That's because the VM snapshot request was chained using the VM ID. And this again is where that uh, label is important to kind of choose something that's gonna um, be able to be contextually clear what it is. So we're gonna choose the VM ID here, and we're gonna match this to the ID on the object, which is the rubric VM object. So the, the ID will match it and be perfect. So now we've basically specified uh, to the management pack builder when it's making those requests and trying to create all the rubric VMs, how does it combine these um, fields together, these different lists? And so we can save this. And now we have our two objects. We have a rubric cluster and a rubric VM and a number of um, you know, properties associated with them. In later videos, we'll cover how uh, relationships work as well as events where we may use these uh, objects and attach other information to them.